Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. To record anything on your screen, there are a lot of solutions out there, but the best one and the most free one is OBS, or Open Broadcast Software. It's a free and open source software that is awesome, easy to use, and very powerful. You can see that I've got it right here. I'll go ahead and full screen it. This is how it's gonna look, and then you can display and choose whatever you want to see and capture through the power of scenes, sources, and your audio mixer. So to capture this, I'm actually using Streamlabs OBS, which is an offshoot of OBS designed to make streaming easier. So you can see that this is what's actually recording on the screen. So I'm using that to show you how to use OBS, but oftentimes I'll use OBS itself if I'm just recording something. Now this can also stream, but Streamlabs, which is also free, makes it easier in that it auto retrieves your key and takes care of other things like that. And so if you wanna stream, Streamlabs is how you do it. If you wanna just record, OBS is fantastic. They can both do both. So it just depends on what you're looking for. So let's go ahead and dive into OBS. Now down here on the left are scenes. Scenes have multiple sources and the sources are what you actually see on the screen. So let's go ahead and click the plus icon and add a source. This time we're gonna go with a display capture. This is our monitor. So I'm gonna name this monitor one. This is my main monitor and you can see that it's right here and you can choose between the two that you've got. So I'm gonna go with the first one and you can also see the resolution and you can choose to not capture the cursor if you don't want to. Click okay and now this is on here. Now this is gonna look pretty trippy most of the time because I'm recording and capturing kind of on the same thing here. So we'll just get used to that. So now we have monitor one over here, but we can add more sources as well if we wanted to. So we could add our second monitor. And then we have select monitor two. And now you can see that we can move these around to however you want them to fit. So if we want, we can right click on monitor two down here and we have the option to transform, which will allow us to change how it appears on the screen. So we can flip it, rotate it, or we can fit it to screen. Now this is upscaling, so you can already see that because this is a 1920 monitor being recorded at 2560, that it looks a little fuzzy. So we don't really want to do that. So I'm gonna grab these corners, we're gonna make this smaller, and then we can grab this one. If we wanna have both monitors on the screen, you can absolutely do that in whatever order and whatever position you want, which is pretty cool. Now, I don't want monitor two in here, so I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna right click, transform, and fill this to the screen. Now let's try adding something else. You can see that we have a long list here. We can do browsers, color source, game capture, images, media, scenes, text, VLC video source, video capture device is gonna be your webcam. Now mine is not currently hooked up, but you could easily add this as a camera. You can use a virtual camera, which we'll, which we'll just say that's fine for now. And then you can position your camera wherever you'd want to. So if you wanted to record yourself in the corner with your main screen here, you can do that or you can reverse that. But you probably wanna make one scene just like this, and then you can switch between scenes, which is also really cool. So let's come down here and add a new scene. So let's call this a gaming scene. So let's say we wanna do a game capture, and we'll click OK. And now I don't have any full screen, but you can set it to capture any full screen application, or you can capture a specific window that's up, which is also really cool. So I'll go ahead and click OK right here. And now this is gonna capture a full screen application. And we can come in here, we can add a new video source. And you can see that the ones we've added are already still there. So let's say while we're gaming, we wanna have a much smaller window of us in the left. And while we're talking, we wanna have a larger version of us in the screen right here. Then you can just switch between these and you can see it nicely fades between them. And that's something that you can completely control how it fades, how fast, what kind of transition you've got here, all of that stuff is available to tweak to your liking. Next is the audio. So the desktop audio, 
we've got desktop, camera, and mic. And that's because we have a camera set up right here. If we didn't have this camera in the scene, we want to remove it, that camera mic then goes away. Now, I'm talking and I actually have my microphone on and running, but you don't see anything moving here because we need to click on Properties, or this, the gear, then click on Properties, and change the device. So I am using the Logitech H800 headset. And voila, now it's picking it up. And if it's too hot, if it's up here in the red, you can bring this down by some decibels, however much you want to. Same thing for the audio, you can tweak that. So that is the audio for whatever you're gonna be capturing. You can have as many sources on here as you want, and it's even possible to set them up to have different audio streams for your editor, which will be in another video, so be sure and check that out. And then we come into the settings, and this is where things can get a little confusing. There's a lot of settings here, especially if you click on the advanced mode within some of these, but we're gonna cover just the absolute basics to get up and running. The first is gonna be output. So here we have a video bitrate for streaming and a path for recording. On the simple mode, this is gonna be exactly the same for both streaming and recording. If you click on advanced, you then have different tabs for recording and you can choose different audio tracks, which is also really cool, for each one of these and mess with the audio settings and all of that stuff. For now, we'll go ahead and just keep it simple. And the bitrate you choose is gonna depend upon what you are recording and the quality that you want to record it at. To find the best bitrate for your system and setup, let's come to the support. You can just look for YouTube recommended bitrate and it'll take you to this support page and click on bitrate. And this is gonna depend on the resolution that you've got. So I am using 1440p, which is 2K. So the standard bitrate that they suggest is 16 megabits per second for up to 30 frames, and then up to 24 megabits per second at a high frame rate. And then you have the same down here for audio, and then for video bit rates for HDR uploads are even more. So you can check these out to figure out exactly what you should be doing. Now a megabit is 1000 bytes. So if we want to stream or record at 1080p, we want to do eight megabits per second, which is right here. So we'll do 8,000 kilobits per second, which will be eight megabits per second. Since I actually have a 1440p monitor, I'll go ahead and jump this up to 16,000 kilobits per second. Now, something to note is that bitrate is very important, but at the same time, your computer can only do so much, and the higher the bitrate, the more toll it's going to take on your system. And we can see the toll it's gonna to take if we set this out here, click OK, and then we just start recording. Down here in the bottom right, you've got a CPU percentage and an FPS that it's trying to reach. Now, if it's unable to reach those or your CPU recording percentage starts getting too high, then it's going to show you that and your video is going to become choppy and slow and start looking really, really bad. So when you're playing around with these settings, make sure you test them recording, doing what you're actually doing before you do your entire video. I have had many times when I set my bit rate or my resolution and then I try and do something and it comes out super choppy and I've lost 30, 45 minutes making a video. Always double check that these actually work with the system you're using before you actually do that. Then we have video. So we have a base canvas resolution and an output. So the base canvas is what it's actually recording. So right now my monitor, 2560 by 1440. The output is what the video itself will eventually come out to be, and I want it to be the same thing. So I'm gonna choose 2560 by 1440. Scaling down makes total sense. If you only want 1080p, but you're recording at a higher resolution, you wanna make sure to capture all that and then scale it down properly. I would not recommend ever scaling up because you're, it's just not gonna look very good and you're gonna lose a lot of quality. FPS, if you can, do 60, unless you're filming a movie on your computer, then you probably wanna do uh, 24. And then the downscaler filter, don't worry too much, but if you want better setting, you wanna move it to sharpened scaling at 36 samples. 
audio here, you can just leave it for the most part unless you know kind of what you're doing. The audio is going to come across really nice and I'd recommend having an external microphone for anything you do anyway. So this probably won't affect that too much at all. The last really big tip that I have for you is in the output, I would recommend recording in MKV because if you change it to MP4, it will give you a little warning message and it says that if it is interrupted, it cannot be restarted, it's unrecoverable. So you'll lose everything if it corrupts, if it fails, if you lose power, any of those things, you just won't be able to get it back. Whereas if you record in MKV, you'll always have access to the file even if it you lose power directly to your computer, it saves right up until that point, which is super nice. Now, MKV is something that is really difficult to edit, like even Adobe Premiere doesn't accept MKV. So what we do is go to General, and then what we're gonna do is have it remux or transcode it into MP4 at the end. So go to the Advanced tab and click on Automatically Remux to MP4. So then you'll get two files at the end, one MKV and one MP4, and you'll use the MP4 file. Now, it's a little bit extra work, it might take a, a few seconds or a few minutes, depending on the length of your video, to get it to the MP4, but trust me, it's gonna be worth it if you ever run into a problem where the stream or the recording just dies, you'll be grateful that you have everything saved up until that point. And that's a really quick rundown of how to use OBS with the proper settings for your system, bitrate, resolution, adding scenes and sources, and making sure your audio is working properly. With all that, you are now ready to start recording and moving between scenes and doing whatever you want to do. OBS is fantastic. We have just scratched the surface. If you have any questions about specific features, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear them and cover them in future videos. And as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.